So raise your hand if you're not good at math. All right, that might be a little awkward, but maybe nod your head if you've ever said those words or you've heard somebody say the same thing. Because unfortunately, I think it's pretty common and it's become pretty normalized not to be good at math. And a lot of students just believe they are not good at math because they are not good at math type of people. Well, in this video, what I wanna do is dive in a little bit deeper on what are the exact thoughts that make us think that we are not good at math and how can we reframe our thoughts so therefore that we can be successful in math, have a little bit better of a time, maybe enjoy a little bit more of success and maybe reduce a little bit of the stress that so often comes with students when they are trying to do their math. Now, the number one reason why students feel they are not good at math is because thoughts from their past. Now, these can be thoughts from the past of an experience or maybe what some other people have told them. So one of the more common ones is like if a student has had trouble with math, like maybe they had a really hard math class, maybe they can relate to some earlier struggles, or maybe they failed a quiz, a test, maybe they got everything wrong on a homework assignment and got embarrassed being in front of their friends. Maybe they had a horrible teacher that was really bad at teaching them mathematics, and maybe might have said to them that, hey, you're not good at math, or maybe you should go into another field. It's sad that it happened. That's really mean. And unfortunately, people tell me this all the time, that their parents, their teachers, their friends tell them about them and their ability in math. And it's just sad. Guess what? It's not what is to define you as a math student. We are not defined by our past. I don't care about your struggles in mathematics. I don't care that you might've failed a class or that you had a bad teacher or that people are telling you that you can't be successful in math. When you have these thoughts that you know come from your past experiences, you have to understand them. You have to grip them in your hand and say, hey, I am not gonna hang on to you. I'm not gonna take you along for the rest of my life because whatever is in your past does not have to define you. I say this to my students students all the time when they get a grade that they don't want. It could be on a test or a quiz or really anything, but they're all upset. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm horrible at math or I'm really struggling in this class. I'm, I'm not good at math. I'm not a math student. And I say one single grade, one single class, whatever somebody says to you is not going to define how you're going to be successful in math. So please do not hold on to it. When you get these thoughts, collect them. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, and then push them to the side. Now, the next type of thoughts that really hold students back with being successful in math is their thoughts about the future. Now, I will take some credit, but it's true. Us of math teachers and what I did inside the classroom for 14 years, and sometimes even the videos that I make on YouTube. And it's true, us of educators have not done a very good job of selling what we are teaching. And yes, we're teaching mathematics, but we have to sell mathematics. Why do you need to be learning this stuff? And you're all familiar with the age old question, when am I going to use this in real life? Why am I learning? this stuff. And if you want to know the real answer, all you simply need to know is this. The real reason we need to learn math is because we now, I'm not trying to avoid the question. And actually, I'll tell you straight on. The reality is there is a ton of math that we still teach that not every single student needs to know. Of course, we need people that excel in mathematics. And of course, a lot of the curriculum that we have is developed to produce high quality mathematicians. However, for the everyday students, I still believe a lot of our curriculum is outdated. We could probably get rid of a lot of the problems that we still require students to know and understand. And part of that is because like, what do we really want students to learn and understand about mathematics? Is it really a goal? Is it really a race to calculate? or do we need students to be able to have a better understanding of a larger variety or do we need students to have a better understanding of different topics in mathematics that often get overlooked in high school and college curriculums? Now, let me be clear. Let me be crystal clear. I am a huge proponent of students still going through math. I do not believe that we should just know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. I believe students need to be exposed to higher level mathematics and I really do want everybody to expose to calculus topics, but I don't think the way that things have been done is the best way for us to be moving forward as far as teaching and introducing the concepts for students to learn and understand. If you don't feel like you're good at math, then you're not gonna care on what you're learning. You're gonna feel like it's a complete waste of time. And guess what? If you feel like it's a complete waste of time, you're not gonna put your time energy and effort into doing well in your class or learning the material. Now, obviously, if you're in a math field, that's a big problem. But what about if you're studying something that does not require mathematics, but you still have to be taking a certain class? Understand that, yes, I get it. Sometimes there are classes. Sometimes there are things that we have to do that we do not see the direct application in real life. I know math always gets the blame, but I can probably say that for a majority of stuff that I learned in high school and in college that I've never used since then. But I remember a lot of times I remember studying and going through classes. I did not want to do it. But I pushed my way through those classes because I looked at the future. I knew that I needed to pass the class. I needed to be successful in the class. I needed to put in the effort into that class. So therefore I could get a better grade. Therefore I could learn the necessary information to do better in my other classes or improve my GPA. So when you think you're not good at math, think about some of the reasons why you're in that class. What are your goals? Maybe your goals are in mathematics and hopefully that can give you some motivation to keep on overcoming your struggles to learn material. And then sometimes if your goals are not outside of them, just understand that sometimes doing well in math is just a 
a stepping stone into what you really want to achieve. Now, the last important thought that affects students being successful in math is when they don't feel they are strong math students is how they think about themselves. And what I mean by that is, are they able to overcome their challenges on their own? Because guess what? Challenges and failures are a part of life. They're going to happen. You are going to struggle in some math. And if you have not struggled with the math up to this point in your life, then I would challenge you to challenge yourself further. Because I don't think you can find a mathematician or somebody that has achieved any success in life that cannot relate to a failure that has helped them get better in their craft. But overcoming failure is tough. And a lot of students simply want to avoid the failure. It's why when we fail a test, it's so easy to say, oh yeah, that test was hard. Oh yeah, I didn't study for that test. I had other things I was doing. Oh yeah, that test was way too hard. It makes us feel better to say that we didn't try. So therefore we don't have to come with the reality that we are struggling and we didn't put in our best effort. Students that struggle with math believe that is exactly the type of person they are. They believe that everybody that does well in math, everybody that understands was born that way and that is why they're good at math. They maybe have smart parents or they went to a better elementary school or whatever excuse they can come up with. It's always something else rather than the work, the effort, and the time that those students had put in to that class. You really got to reflect on your thoughts. Do you believe in your ability to overcome your challenges? And sometimes if you have not had past experiences, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take some small successes. And so you can start seeing the power in your ability to change your behavior and to improve your understanding in math. You have to see a positive future. You have to be able to let go of the past and you have to be able to understand that no matter what challenge that is in front of you, you can improve. Don't let a bad test or a grade saddle you. And don't feel that learning math is completely useless for your future or for your studies. Know that if you can do more problems, practice, study, you can improve. It's not going to come overnight. It takes time. You have to be patient because math is hard. It doesn't come easy, but just because it comes easy to some people doesn't mean everything came easy to them. Of course, experiences are going to different from student to student, but don't compare yourself to other students. You can only compare yourself to yourself. And so I want to challenge you. If you have these thoughts of you are not good at math to really understand where are they coming from and to get rid of them. Change your focus, put in the work, give yourself time. And I'm telling you, you can see success in mathematics. Go out there and get it. Cheers.